Hi everyone, I'm Chill and welcome back to another detailed champion guide. Today I will be talking about Croak, the Ranit Assassin. And so sit back, relax and enjoy the show. Croak is an agile and sneaky melee DPS character who excels in stealth and CC as well as occasionally dealing strong burst damage with his twin blades. He has access to various options for stealth and escape, making him super slippery to pin down, and it also makes him very good at chasing down weaker enemies. He has a number of CC options as well, and so he is a great asset to have in the team when he is played correctly. While Croak is very strong in the right hands, I think that he is not a very easy champion to master, and he's definitely a hero that excels more in a coordinated team than in a solo queue environment. So if you don't have some friends to play with, you might need to coordinate a little bit to make the most out of Croak. Croak is by no means a beginner friendly champion and he is one of the harder champions to learn so if you're not succeeding with him as quickly as any other champion, don't be discouraged because it will probably take some time to be really good with him. So yeah, before we start, just like the other champion guides I have made previously for Taya and Raygon, to name a few, I have split this guide up into different sections and I've included timestamps directly to each section in the description below. As usual, feel free to skip ahead to the section that you need if you have already watched the video before. And again, we'll start the guide off with looking at Croak's abilities before talking about his playstyle, strengths and weaknesses. Then we'll look at his battle right options and finally we finish off with some of my gameplay tips and potential combos when using Croak. And so without further ado, let's begin. First off, let's talk about his abilities one by one. Croak's left click or mouse 1 ability is Blade Flurry and this is his basic attack. For the first 4 hits, Croak will attack very quickly and once those 4 hits are over, he'll start attacking at his normal attack speed. After 3 seconds of not attacking, those 4 charges will recharge and Croak can attack quickly again for another 4 hits. His space bar and Q abilities also refresh his attack charges, so you'll typically want to try to burst the enemy after using either of those abilities. On to his right click on mouse 2 ability, it is called Toxin Monk. What Croak does is that he spits out Toxin at a target location and when it lands, some damage will be dealt to the enemies within the area of effect. It will also put a Toxin debuff on all enemies within the area which will continually deal damage to them while healing Croak for some time. Pretty sweet. This is Croak's main form of sustain, so it's usually good to use the ability of cooldown. Try to get the debuff on as many people as possible since Croak gets the healing from each debuffed enemy. Next up, Croak's spacebar ability is Frog Leap and this is his main movement ability. What it does is Croak will jump and deal some damage just in front of where he lands. This damage is quite significant and the ability is typically used offensively because of this. Because the range of this ability is rather limited, by that I mean there's a minimum range to jump to and the maximum range isn't that much further as well. So it might take a bit of practice to get used to that sweet spot range that you have to be at to fully make use of the damage from this ability. After using the ability once, there will be a short time where Croak can recast this ability one more time to effectively jump again. Typically, it will be enough for Croak to land between 4-5 to five hits in this duration, and so when using this ability offensively, it is ideal to land a few hits on an enemy before jumping again. Though having said that, sometimes in less than ideal situations, you can forego those hits and just try to go for jump damage or something. We'll go more into the strategies when using this ability later in the video. Just don't forget that using spacebar refreshes your weapon charges, so try to make good use of it. Moving on, Croak's Q ability is his main stealth ability and it is called Camouflage. What it does is that it gives Croak invisibility and a fading haste buff and during this time, the first attack that Croak does will trigger a stun on the enemy he hits, allowing for Croak and his team to deal lots of burst damage on the poor enemy. Very nice. It apparently removes negative effects too, so I suppose it is useful for removing those pesky debuffs that champions like Varesh or other Croaks put on you, for example. Next up, Croak's E ability is Noxious Lunge, and this is another one of his movement abilities. What Croak does with this ability is that he dashes forward a fixed distance, while dealing damage to enemies and orbs he passes through. Primarily, I use this ability as an escape, since his spacebar and Q abilities are better initiators than this ability, so jump in with space or something, do what you need to do and dash out with E. Sometimes, if the central orb or an enemy has less than 12 health, then using this ability as a finisher is a great choice as well. So yeah, quite a neat little ability. So those were all of Croak's abilities that doesn't require energy, now let us move on to those which do. Croak's R ability is called Toxin Blades, and this ability puts a buff on Croak for 25 energy, 
that makes his Mouse 1 attacks hurt more and puts the Toxin debuff on enemies that was hit by those Mouse 1 attacks. The buff lasts for several seconds and it is a pretty good way of putting out even more burst damage if you expect to be able to hit an enemy a couple of times in the next few seconds. The best time to use it is just after stunning an enemy so that you can get at least a few hits in. If you are about to use your Q just to immediately stun an enemy already in melee range, then using R just before using Q to quickly stun an enemy is also a good choice. Those were just some quick examples of using the ability, but a lot of it will definitely come down to the exact situation you're in as Crook. Moving on, Crook's first EX ability is his shift right click ability and it is called Sludge Spit. For 25 energy, Crook can shoot a projectile attack that deals some damage to the target that it hits, put a toxin debuff on the target, as well as reduce the target's sight range by 80%. This is a very powerful ability at isolating an enemy since he won't be able to see very far and hence make the right decisions in the fight. In 1 vs 1 situations, this can be very powerful as well since he or she you are fighting might find it tough to know what you're planning to do as he or she cannot really see much when blinded. Pretty sweet. Crook's second EX ability is his Shift Q ability and it's called Deceit. This is another one of Crook's strong abilities because of the amount of CC it can put up. The ability costs 25 energy to use, but what it does is that Crook will go invisible again while gaining a bit of movement speed buff just like the normal Q ability, but this time instead of just stunning the first enemy he hits while invisible, he actually incapacitates them for some time, putting them out of the fight for a while or until they get damaged and Crook continues to be cloaked. The second attack while cloaked will be just like the normal Q ability and so it will stun the first enemy Crook hits while invisible. This ability is mostly why Crook performs so much better in a coordinated team because of the combo potential that it has with your teammates powerful abilities. We'll get into more of this ability later in the video, because there's so much to say. And finally, Crook's ultimate on the F key is Venom Win. What it does is basically Crook will dash forward a set distance after a brief channeling delay and enemies that Crook passes through while dashing forward will be given the Venom debuff. The Venom debuff causes strong damage over time effect on those enemies before it explodes to do more area of effect damage around them, so I suppose it's pretty powerful. The downside to the ability is the relatively long channeling, so people with quick reactions can try to avoid it, as well as the long explode time, so champions with the invincibility frame abilities ready can avoid the explosion damage too. And so if you want to use it for the damage, you probably need to find some way to stun them right after you apply the debuff on them or something. Anyway, because of how strong Croak's EX abilities are, it is likely that you won't be using the ultimate much since it will take a while to charge up all the energy while you're spending energy using his other abilities at the same time. And so that's about it for Croak's abilities. Now, let us move on to its playstyle, strengths and weaknesses. Croak's playstyle, as you can guess for an assassin type champion, is a bit of a back and forth, go aggressive for a bit and then back off kind of playstyle. After unleashing all of his moves, Croak can be pretty vulnerable if he has no means of escape and so you definitely want to be smart when picking your fights and how you want to approach each little fight. Typically when trying to focus one target down, I typically try to jump on them to hit a few times and once they use their escape, use the second jump to close the gap again to attack more. If needed, I can also use Q or Shift Q to try to incapacitate them or stun them for combos or even more burst damage. If you have spare energy and you want more burst damage, using R for that could be good too so that is always an option. If things go bad or you need to finish an enemy, then using E is a good choice for that during downtimes in between jumping into melee range and dealing solid damage onto enemies, just put with the mouse 2 ability for some healing and free damage. That's mostly your typical game plan. Depending on what champions you're facing, you may have to switch it up a little bit. A good example is when versusing Jade, because of a spacebar ability which stuns melee enemies near her. This makes it highly ineffective to try to jump directly onto her to attack her, and so because of this, a good idea is to try to bait out the space bar first, either with a fake invis with Croak to make her think that you're going to go for a stun when you're actually trying to make her waste her space bar. Otherwise, you could also try to coordinate with a teammate to make her waste her space bar. That's just one example, but for most cases, your typical game plan should work decently well. Though having said that, a lot of success with Croak actually comes from proper decision making on the fly, then predetermined game plans. So try to train yourself to improvise and go with the flow. Some guidelines you can follow is this, the main aim for Croak is to deal meaningful damage, and so that means dealing enough burst damage that it becomes unhealable for your opponent. So when you do engage, try to have a plan in mind that will maximize your chances of doing that. Another thing is that you can't do damage when you're dead, and Croak is pretty squishy without an escape cooldown available, so definitely save an ability for escaping, whether it be using your dash to escape or saving the second jump for escaping. Both should work fine. So yeah, that's mostly it for Croak's playstyle, just try to make good decisions, survive and deal meaningful damage. 
onto its strengths, I think that Croak is really good at chasing down weak enemies, and this is a big deal because if you can finish enemies out faster, you can make it so that you have a numbers advantage earlier and proceed to easily win the game after that. Moving on, I think that another one of Croak's strengths is his combo potential with other champions. There are a number of other champions with very hard hitting abilities, but landing those abilities can be inconsistent. Therefore, having a Croak to incapacitate and stun an enemy long enough for both Croak and the teammate to unleash their abilities on them can prove to be super effective, and so I think that this is one of his biggest strengths. Finally, I think that Croak's biggest strength is his ability to apply lots of pressure with his stealth abilities. Clerny made a very good write-up on this on the BattleRite subreddit, and I think it is worth a read if you're interested, so I've put a link to it in the description below. The main gist of it is that whenever Croak uses a stealth ability, it puts this pressure on the whole enemy team to use an escape or an out to try to avoid getting hit by Croak's CC, because it would mean massive amounts of burst unhealable damage if it were to land. The risk is too high not to use an ability just to get out there as soon as possible, and it is why he thinks that the stealth abilities are so strong. When I read this, it made sense to me, and so I think this is one of Croak's biggest strengths. It is for the same reason that trying to use your Q to bait Jade's spacebar like I mentioned earlier is a viable tactic. Moving on to Croak's weaknesses, I think that Croak tends to be punished quite hard if you make silly mistakes and be left without any escapes, and so he can sometimes feel quite unforgiving to play. He doesn't have any strong defensive abilities that help him to survive should he mess up, and so it can sometimes be quite tense to play with Croak since you gotta be on point with your movement abilities. Leaving Croak's E ability ready as an escape is typically a good option like I mentioned previously, but because Croak is not invulnerable while dashing with his E, using his E to escape can sometimes be disastrous if your enemies happen to somehow stun or interrupt your dash midway. When that happens, you're left without any proper escapes after that, and will likely take quite a bit of damage as a result. So yeah, sometimes Croak can get hit pretty hard because of this. Next up, I think he's also pretty weak in a straight 1 vs 1 situation because of how his attack works. It is very often when melee champions go against another melee champion to have them both trading hits non-stop for a few seconds. And because Croak's attack becomes slower after a few hits, it is disadvantageous for him to do this and he should probably try to get out as soon as possible after the first 4 hits. And finally, I think that another one of Croak's weakness is his lack of strong sustain. This is likely due to how mobile and stealthy he is, but it also makes him even more unforgiving to play, in addition to how weak he is already if he doesn't have any escapes ready, since it is quite tough to regain those lost health when fighting in melee range most of the time. I suppose all of these just add up to make him the champion that he is, a high skill floor and high skill ceiling champion that requires high amounts of attention to get right, but I guess some people like these sorts of gameplay, haha. <laughs> and so that's about it for his playstyle, strengths and weaknesses. Now, let us move on to Croak's battle right options. Once again, you can pause the video to slowly read through every single battle right if you wish, before I go through my thoughts on his battle rights, since it'll take a long while for me to read it all out for you. And so, pause now to read them all. Okay, now that you've read them all, let's continue. In the first tier, I think that the best choice for this tier is Spit Spit Spit. While Venom Strike can be pretty good for the extra burst damage and potential AoE damage as well, I think Spit 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 is still the better pick overall because it is a more consistent pick. Having two charges of your mouse 2 ability makes it so that your toxin debuff uptime is longer, meaning more heals and more damage on the enemies. Not to mention the ability to constantly blind your enemies with your shift mouse 2 ability if you have enough energy. So that's pretty sweet. Noxious reaction is interesting because CCs are usually good, but because we typically use E as an escape, the route is mostly irrelevant unless you're setting up for a combo with a teammate. But if that's what you're going for, using Q or your Shift Q ability for that is much more consistent, so I think Spit 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 is still the best pick here. On to the second tier, I think that all three choices are pretty viable. If you feel that you need a lot of healing or that you're getting poked a lot and cannot really get close to the enemies very often, Mending Toxin can help you survive longer and wait for a perfect opportunity to go attack. If you need the extra movement speed to make your stun and incapacitates more consistent, for example, when you want to make sure you hit those CCs to combo with the teammate's abilities, then Cut to the Chase should help with that. Outside of those situations, Twin Strike should be the default pick because it gives you so much more burst potential, since you can now jump, hit 2-3 times, jump again and hit another 2-3 times to do just as much damage as hitting the enemies 4 times before each jump which I think is a big help considering how easy it is for Croak to get punished if he stays too long within range of enemies without his full range of abilities. Moving on in the third tier, I think most of the time Jungle Toad will be the best pick. Outside of this battle right, Croak mostly only gets his healing from those toxin debuffs and so having another way of getting some burst healing is always nice and so Jungle Toad it is. 
As nice as it is to have Croak's R ability refresh his attacks, enemies tend to not want to have Croak next to them for too long anyways, and so it might be quite hard to get value out of the Batarite. Besides your Q, Shift Q and both users of Spacebar all refresh your attacks, and so it shouldn't be too hard to have those quick attacks when you need them. While cooldown reduction is very welcome in most cases, I think the value from those heals is better than having the cooldown of your stealth abilities reduced, since the times when you actually use stealth is when you really want to stun an enemy soon, and not as often as possible. In the 4th tier, I think that it is mostly a choice between Slayer and Crippling Poison. Recuperate seems really niche, because having more healing received doesn't really help that much for Croak, and you're better off trying to kill the enemy than trying to stay alive as long as possible. Between Slayer and Crippling Poison, I think Crippling Poison really helps when you feel you're getting kited a bit too easily, and you need the movement speed slow on your enemies to get more hits in. Otherwise, Slayer is pretty okay choice for Croak because of the way he works. Croak deals damage every so often whenever he jumps in, and so being able to output that much more burst damage when an enemy is low on health might make the difference between killing them there and then, or them surviving. I know that in previous videos I have stated that battle rights like Slayer isn't very good because it doesn't really help you get your opponents down to that health to begin with, but in this case, given the other choices and also how Croak works as a champion, being the jump in, do some burst damage and jump out kinda champion, Slayer might actually be the best pick here. So yeah, pick Slayer when in doubt, but if you feel you need the additional slow on the enemies, then take Crippling Poison. Finally, in the 5th and final tier, I think that Momentum is probably the better pick. Typically, when enemies are inflicted with the Venom debuff, they'll try to time their abilities so that they can avoid the explosion damage, and so what you can do with increased movement speed is to try to run straight to your target, go stealth and stun them so that they cannot avoid the damage. The healing from leeching Venom isn't very significant since just jumping onto one enemy once will heal you almost just as much, so Momentum is still the better pick. Even if you don't need to run up to the enemy to stun them after using your ultimate, just having the movement speed boost to reposition after using your ultimate is a pretty sweet bonus too. And so yeah, that's about it on Croak's battle rights. Now let's move on to some of my gameplay tips for playing Croak, as well as some potential combos with him. My first tip for playing Croak is to be patient. Being such an opportunistic champion means that you must be patient and wait for the right times to jump in, strike a few times, maybe get a stun off and all those type of stuff. It definitely makes a big difference because if you just go head on and try to attack enemies without care, you'll likely be kited and just take a lot of unnecessary damage, and so be patient. Moving on, while I don't have useful tips to helping you aim your jumps better to make use of its damage, I think that it is quite important to keep practicing hitting those jumps because those jump damage is pretty significant and they add up quite quickly. A good way to collect the orb for your team quickly is to jump right on it for 20 damage, followed by 4 hits and an E. If you don't want to use your E that way, then using R just before jumping in will make it so that you can still kill the orb in 4 hits after jumping on it. Once you picked up the Twin Strikes battle right in the second round, you can just do the jump followed by 4 hits to get it, or you can also do the jump, hit 3 times and finish it off with an E. So lots of different ways to get the AWP, and I think it's quite good that there's so many ways to get it since that means you'll often be able to get AWP quickly if the enemies are too far away. Next up, if you sometimes have trouble trying to jump twice onto a same target, a good way to do it would be first to of course jump on the target that you want to hit, then you hit them maybe once or twice, and proceed to quickly move away from them, in the opposite direction of where they're running. This way, they'll likely be within the minimum range of your spacebar by the time you try to cast the spacebar again, so that can be pretty handy. On to combos with Croak, I think there's not too many combos that Croak can pull off, by combos I mean like a string of abilities put together, other than the obvious jump into mouse 1 a few times, jump again etc, or like a simple stun mouse 1 a few times and finish with an E to escape, there's not much to say about Croak's combos because they're mostly quite simple. Another reason is also that Croak is a champion that you sort of need to improvise on the fly almost, and going with a set combo probably isn't the best way of doing things. On to Croak's preferred teammates, I think that Croak pairs well with champions that can hold their own very well, regardless if they're ranged or melee or support. So champions like Rokan, Uldur, Jumong all pair pretty well with Croak. These champions all can make use of Croak's combo initiating capabilities, as well as provide the cover that Croak needs while waiting for his skills to recharge. Support champions go quite well with Croak as well, since they can help him sustain his health bar too, so that's pretty nice. A notable mention for team compositions is the Croak and Jade combo, which has been a pretty strong tools team composition for quite some time, because of the double stealth and Croak's setup into Jade Snipe and all that. But of course, good coordination between both players is a must for that. And so overall, I think Croak is a very strong champion in the right hands and team, since coordination with your teammates is fairly important for a Croak player, 
but he may not be the most accessible champion with such a high skill floor. Having said that though, he is pretty fun to play with all the CCs and impactful stuns and all that stuff, just remember it is quite important to be patient and wait for a chance to strike to really make the most out of Croak I feel. And so yeah, that's about it for my Croak guide, I hope you found it useful. I have tallied up the polls on my older guide and it seems like a Jumong guide will be up next. If you want to vote for which champion guide I will do next after Jumong's guide, you can do so by clicking the i button at the top right now. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please subscribe to the channel, like it, comment on it, share this video and you can check out my other videos as well if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching my video and until next time guys, keep on gaming, stay chill and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.